Hello friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. Footing is one of the major structural element which transfers the load safely to the soil. The slab load will transfer to beam, beam load will transfer to column, column will transfer the load to the footing and footing has to safely transfer the load to the soil. So in order to design the footing, we need to arrive how much load is coming on the footing and then we need to arrive the size of the footing to carry the column load. In addition to the column load, there are other loads which is coming on the footing. As you can see here, apart from the column load, there are other loads are also acting on the footing. So once the footing is casted, after that we need to backfill this area. Backfill the excavated area. From the ground level, we have to excavate up to certain depth. So that area we need to do the backfilling. So that backfilling load will also come on the footing. That we need to calculate. And along with that we need to calculate the self weight of the footing. So these are all the loads we need to calculate while arriving the size of the footing. So friends in this video let's see how do we calculate the load coming on footing. Consider this rectangular slab of 12 feet 9 inches by 10 feet 3 inches which is having 4 columns. If you take this section from the ground level it is 1.5 meter depth that is the excavation depth. This is the PCC footing column and this is the PP. So here is the floor level and above that this is the floor level and this is the roof level. These are all the roof beams and here the roof slab will come. So let's start the calculation. Before starting the calculation, let's see what are all the loads coming on the footing. Load from slab, beam load, plinth beam load plus wall load, column load, self weight of footing, backfilling load. So let's calculate one by one. Let's look into the structural dimensions. First let's see the size of the footing which is 4 feet by 4 feet and depth of the footing is 12 inches. And this is the excavation size that is 4 feet 4 inches by 4 feet 4 inches. Column size is 9 inch by 15 inches, beam size is 9 inch by 15 inches, slab thickness is 5 inches. So these are all the structural dimensions. First let's calculate the load from slab. Consider this C1 column. Here I have the influence area. Slab thickness is 5 inches. Self weight of the slab we need to calculate that is 0.125 multiplied by 25. 25 is the unit weight of the concrete that comes around 3.125 kN per meter square. Floor finish load is 1.5 kN per meter square. Live load is 2 kN per meter square. So total load we need to add all these three loads. That comes around 6.625 kN per meter square. Influence area for C1 column. So this is the area. Tributary area. So this area is half of this length and half of this width. For C1 column this is the influence area. That is 1.94 by 1.56 which comes around 3.03 meter square. Next we need to calculate the slab load on column. So the total load is 6.625 multiplied by the area which comes around 20 kN. Next we need to calculate the load from beam. So on this roof beam there will not be any other load which is coming because there is no above loads. So only self weight of the beam will come. For C1 column, B1 self weight plus B3 self weight will come. So we need to calculate these two self weight. Half of the self weight of B1 and half of the self weight of B3 will go to C1 column. So let's calculate that. Beam size is 9 inch by 15 inches. Self weight of the beam first we need to calculate that is 0.225 multiplied by 0.375 multiplied by 25 that is 2.11 kN per meter. First let's consider this span C1 to C2 that is 3.88 meter. So the load UDL is 2.11 kN per meter. So how do we calculate this load? W L by 2. This is W. L is this one span L by W L by 2 which comes 4.09 kN. That means for C1 4.9 kN and uh, sorry for C1 4.09 kN similarly for C2 4.09 kN. Next let's calculate this span that is 3.12 meter WL by 2 that is 3.29 kN on each column. So for C1 we need to add this value plus this value. The total load is 
सेवन पॉइंट थ्री एट किलो न्यूटन नेक्स्ट वन इज लोड फ्रॉम प्लिंथ बीम प्लिंथ बीम साइज इज नाइन इंच बै फिफ्टीन इंचस् सेल्फ वेट आफ द प्लिंथ बीम वी नीड टू कालकुलेट ई टूक द टोटल सेल्फ वेट आफ प्लिंथ बीम सिमिलर टू रूफ बीम सिंस द बीम सैज इज सिमिलर सो दैट इज सेवन पॉइंट थ्री एट किलो न्यूटन नेक्स्ट वी नीड टू कालकुलेट द सेल्फ वेट आफ वॉल आन प्लिंथ बीम पॉइंट टू टू फाइव इज द वॉल थिक्ने नईन इंच वॉल थिक्ने मल्टिप्लाइड बै थ्री इज द फ्लोर हईट मैनस् पॉइंट थ्री सेवन फै इज द रूफ बीम सैज डेप्त आफ द रूफ बीम सो दट वी नीड टू डिडक्ट फ्रम द फ्लोर हईट मल्टिप्लाइड बै ट्वेंटी इज द यूनिट वेट आफ ब्रिक् सो वी गेट लेवन पॉइंट एट वन किलो न्यूटन पर् मीटर सो दिस वॉल लोड विल कम आन दिस पैन एस वेल एस दिस पैन सो वी नीड टू कंसिडर दिस पैन एंड दिस पैन and calculate the load and we need finally we need to find out the total load on column first let's consider this span c1 to c2 that is 3.88 meter the load is 11.81 kN per meter so by solving this we get 22.91 this is also w l by 2 only and again c2 also 22.91 kN next let's consider this span c3 to c1 that is 3.12 meter So if we solve this, 18.42 kilonewton and C1 also 18.42 kilonewton. So next we need to calculate the total load on column. Total load on plinth beam to column C1. So that is self weight of the plinth beam and self weight of wall on plinth beam from this span. This span that is 22.91 plus 18.42. So the total load is 48.71 kilonewton. Next one is load from column. Column size is nine inch by fifteen inch. Self weight we need to find out. Point two two five that is the width of the column. Point three seven five is the depth of the column, and four point five is the height. Total height we need to take three meter is the floor height, and below ground there is one point five meter depth. So that also we need to consider. So I took it as four point five meter multiplied by twenty five. We get 9.49 kN. Next one is self weight of footing. Size of the footing is 4 by 4, 4 feet by 4 feet by 12 inches is the depth. So 1.22 multiplied by 1.22 multiplied by 0.3 multiplied by 25, we get 11.16 kN as the self weight of the footing. And the last one is back filling load. First we need to find out the volume of footing. We know the size of the footing. From that we can find out the volume of the footing. Next, we need to find out the volume of excavation. Let's look into the excavation size: four feet four inches by four feet four inches. So, volume of excavation we can find out. Next, we need to find out the volume of filling. How much volume we are going to fill the earth? That we need to find out. So, for that we need to deduct the footing volume from the excavation volume. So, we know the excavation volume as two point six one meter cube. From that we need to deduct the Footing volume that is 0.446 meter cube. So we get volume of filling as 2.164 meter cube. Now we know the volume of filling, and we need to multiply this with the unit weight of earth. Unit weight of earth is 18 kilonewton per meter cube. So back filling load is volume of filling multiplied by the unit weight. So we get 38.95 kilonewton. Generally, we forgot to calculate this back filling load. We neglect this one, but we are not supposed to do that. We should calculate this load as well to calculate the proper size of the footing. Because after this excavation, we need to fill up to the ground level. Like for till this uh, height, we need to fill the earth. So that load will come on the footing only. So we need to consider that load as well while calculating the load on footing. Let's look into the summary of all the load. Load from slab that is 20.07 kilonewton. Beam load is 7.38. Plinth beam plus wall load is 48.71. Column load is 9.49. Self weight of footing is 11.16. Back filling load is 38.95 kilonewton. So total load on footing is 135.76 kilonewton. Here you may have a doubt like how we can arrive. the size of the footing without knowing the load on the footing so first what you have to do is you you will be knowing all these loads like column load from slab beam load plinth beam load column load everything you will be knowing 
with this load you need to arrive the size of the footing and after arriving the size of the footing you need to add the self weight and back filling load along with that and after that again you have to arrive the size of the footing actual size of the footing so friends in this way you have to calculate the loads coming on the footing i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box if you like this video your comments are always welcome and if you want any particular topic please do post it in the comment box i will try to upload the video on the same topic also please join our channel membership you will be getting exclusive benefits like if you want any pdf files or drawing files i'll be sending to you and also you will be getting exclusive premium videos if you want any particular topic don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos thank you for watching